I know some of you are wondering if today's episode is about cable management. Obviously, I'm not a person to talk about cable management. In fact, I'm probably the worst person to give advice on cable management. Rest at ease. It's on TLS certificates and layers of security. Welcome to Merrick's Marvelous Masterpieces. Today's episode is all about the Kubernetes onion. Like all good onions, there are hundreds of layers of protection for your Kubernetes core. You're gonna make a nice slice right on the end, spin it around like a pro, make another nice slice, and this is gonna provide some access to some of the layers. You can take your knife and just make a thin line there and open it up. You wanna take your Kubernetes onion and slice it as straight as possible, right down the middle. And here, we can now see the layers of security that this Kubernetes onion has, all the way down to its soft core that you don't wanna to expose to anything. Today's episode is all about this TLS layer right here. So what are TLS and SSL certificates? So really, let's start with what's the difference? Really, at the end of the day, TLS certificates is, are SSL certificates version 2.0. They're a little bit more secure. So it, going forward, I will always try to use the terminology TLS. Um, but a lot of people actually still refer to them as SSL, even though they're TLS certificates. Uh, and this is only confounded because the tools used will use CFSSL. That's the library we're going to use to create our TLS certificates. Has SSL in them. Um, a lot of this is just old history um, because SSLs were the original certificates and TLS is the new and improved SSL. We can go into their names. SSL stood for Secure Socket Layer, and TLS stands for Transport Layer Security. The TLS layer provides both authentication and connection security. So let's get into some code and see how we make TLS certificates. And I lied. Instead of getting right into the code, we're going to quickly cover what we'll need to generate certs for. So the first thing we're going to be generating certs for is the control plane, which includes etcd, the API server, controller manager, and scheduler. But included in that, we need to create a certificate authority, um, a some worker nodes, admin client, cube proxy, and the service account. If th these things are confusing, don't worry, we'll cover them gr in greater detail later. Okay, so I want to first go over a little bit about installing CFSSL. The easiest way is just to grab one of their binaries, but if you want to use Go to install it, that's not too bad, but you want to install Go via the binary because it has all of the encryption tools and some package managers that are packaged, have the package, have those removed. So make sure that you have that. Once you've installed Go through the binary, it's really easy. You can use this go get command right here that they have. Um, if you notice the one with the three dots afterwards, this will install all of the CFSSL tools because it's actually a suite of tools and not just a singular tool. Uh, you want to do this because it brings some really useful things. Like one thing that we're going to use is the JSON. You also want to make sure that go is in your path when you try to build. And that makes it really useful. And actually, let's go work. All right, so we've now installed CFSSL. And at this point, we can run CFSSL-H and see that it's in our path and working. And it gives us the available options, that the different commands. At this point, uh, I'd like to point out uh, how I set up my Go path. We have our the path to the actual um, 
Go binary, which allows you to run Go Git and whatnot from the command line, but you also have your uh, uh, Go bin, which is where you build. So the home Merrick Go bin is actually where Go builds out its Go files and allows you to just run Go Git and get something and have it in your path. It's a very quick and easy way to use Go as a way to install your Go packages. All right, so, and you can see here where they installed GoBin. You can see all of the CFSSL tools that were installed. All right, so now we're on to basic cert creation. And basically, all you'll need to do now is create these JSON files and hand them in. So the very first thing that we need to do is create our certificate authority, the thing that can sign certificates. Um, so we're going to create a JSON file for it. As you can see, now we have our CA config and our CA CSR. And from that, we can generate our CA. This will allow us to sign all of our certificates with it and is what kind of makes that handshake possible so that we know who we're talking to. All right. So once we have our CA, now it's really just down to generating all of the certificates for our control plane, for our worker nodes, and everything in between. This is actually quite a few certificates, and so I won't be talking about every single one being created right now. There's a couple little notes to that I found out while following the Kubernetes the hardest way. First, a lot of the a lot of the scripts that he provides heavily use the um, Google Cloud Computes CLI and Google Cloud Computes resources. And so if you're using anything else, be very careful that you're actually getting the right IP addresses in there and not using the GC command line. And that, that if you follow along, you can see where that uh, bit me in the rear end a few times. Um, so other than that, um, let's talk about why we have multiple certs. You could really just make one cert, one cert to rule them all. I apologize for my Lord of the Rings references, but you could. And the reason you don't want to do that is for a couple reasons. One, um, you're trying each cert um, says who you are and what you have access to. So this allows you to give finer grained access to things. The other reason it, you don't want to do that is when you each thing has its own cert, it lets you know um, what you have, as well as if one of these was to get compromised, by some means, some method, they only will have access to what the the cert that was compromised and whatever that had access to. And so you can diminish the black blast radius of a compromise. So here you notice this is where there was the external IP address was referenced to a Google Cloud instance. Um, I just had to find the right IP address for the worker nodes. Um, this was just fixing the external IP addresses that was set for, by the GC cloud commands and just hard coding them in. Um, it was not very difficult. Just be careful when you're doing it and make sure that you realize that that happens. So this is Everything that's happening, it's very simple. You're making the JSON files. You're executing the CFSSL gen cert commands. We're passing it the CA cert, uh, the CA.pem, and we're generating um, them with a signed certificate. Now, this is not a signed certificate that you could use on a website because it is signed by ourselves. So it's what's called a self-signed certificate. You, if you tried to use this on your website, it would have the little broken thing because it's self-signed and that won't work for your website. You need it to be signed by a known registry, not yourself, but that's okay for your infrastructure. So this is where tools that manage Kubernetes clusters come in. 
this is a lot of certs. It would be a lot of certs to keep track of. And you could have clusters with a lot more workers than just two, which would all require their own certs. And this is why I emphasize that everything we do here is not meant for for uh, production means. These certs will expire in exactly one year. And so that means every year you would need to renew all of these certs. And most enterprise ready solutions have a, a method and means to rotate certificates. And it's, it's very important because this is a lot of work and you would be tempted to do uh, poor security measures. You would either make your certs last for 10 years or 20 years so that you didn't have to do it. Or you could actually just forget to rotate your certs and be have things not be able to communicate for a while as you scramble to uh, replace the certs. And remember the commands to generate the certs and all that. So. All right. So the other thing is uh, we're, we are creating another cert for our. um our admin user. So this is what the kubectl command will use. Uh, you need to create a cert for it. Um, as well as you notice, I talked about kube proxy that runs on the machines as well, and it needs its own cert as well. And of course, the API server um, needs its own cert. And yeah, so here we go. And that will be all of the certs that we needed. It wasn't terrible, nothing terribly hard. It's just knowing why you need them and, you know, what goes into a cert. As always, thank you for joining me in this episode of Kubernetes the Hardest Way. I really had fun bringing it to you once again, and I hope that it's been helpful for you.